This week on Beacon Web News, we check out the festivities at the Holiday Market at Greylocks Works. Then, North Adams gets lit at the annual tree lighting ceremony. After that, we join IGE for the Transgender Day of Remembrance. That's coming up next on Beacon Web News. Hello and welcome to the November 28th episode of Beacon Web News. I'm Andrew Strout. Saturday, November 17th, Greylock Works held a festive holiday market. BWN's Karina Matera went to the event to catch some holiday cheer. Kicking off the holiday season, Greylock Works put on their festive holiday market. Not everything in sight was related to a holiday, but it was a fun way to come out and enjoy the comfort of the community. So it's um, a really amazing industrial building that's been redone and it, the event is really featuring local makers, craftspeople, um, local food design. So it's really just an amazing gift show to get ready for the holidays. I think it's a great way to find out what's around in all of our communities and definitely people should check it out. We need to support and keep our business in the Berkshires. Local businesses were out and about to reach new individuals and share with them their unique work. So I'm here representing Jackie's Sedlock Pottery, and what we've got here is um, an assortment of our handmade ceramics from Pownal, Vermont, um, which is just about 20 minutes away, and we're just set up for all the gifting needs. I'm selling illustrations. I'm a watercolor illustration artist, um, so I've got a bunch of variety of sizes at different po uh, price points. Um, illustration prints and some merchandise like stickers, enamel pins. From colorful stickers to homemade hot sauce flavors, this festive holiday market has it all. Only on its second year and it's managed to be a very welcoming and friendly environment. I'd say it's very warm and friendly. I'm loving all the local support. Um, a great variety of makers, food, music, everything you could wish for. I think it's super festive, which is a lot of fun because it's the first of its kind of the season and it's really great seeing friends and, and family out and shopping. Everyone I encountered had a plentiful amount of positive words on the event. I love all the natural cheeses that are here. They're delicious. Every single one. I brought four of them so far. It's craft oriented stuff. It's super cool because I have six year old, five year old and three year old and so they are like, it's magnets and they have loved it. So. I think just being in this space with so many creative people is very inspiring and it's great to support local businesses. Stay tuned for next year as this holiday market will most likely make an appearance again in North Adams. For BQM News, I'm Karina Matera. On November 28th at 3 p.m., the Women's Center is hosting a diversity, equity and inclusion event with Michael Obasahan and Kerry Nicole. Stop by at Campus Center room 323 to join an informative conversation about diversity and how people can overcome differences. Free pizza will be provided. This holiday season, members of the North Adams community donated a record-breaking 1,044 pounds of non-perishable foods and personal items to the Friendship Center. The Friendship Center serves families in the area on Wednesdays and provides a warm waiting room for those in need when the weather turns cold. For those interested in donating or volunteering, visit their website at www.foodpantries.org. On Friday, November 30th at 7 p.m. in the Sullivan Lounge, join MCLA's book club for an extravagant night filled with book-themed games and activities with their annual book club extravaganza. Refreshments will also be provided. Need a space to get your creative juices flowing? Check out the Ashland Street Project Space located at 50 Ashland Street. The space is a community flex space for workshops, performances, meetings, and gatherings. 
For more information, check out the official Facebook page at facebook.com slash ASPSNAMA. The North Adams Farmers Market is this Saturday, December 1st at 85 Main Street in Suite 105 from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. Enjoy local goods from seasonal produce to crepes. Live music will also be provided by Dylan and Luke. For a list of vendors, go to facebook.com slash North Adams Farmers Market. This past Saturday, November 21st, North Adams held their annual tree lighting ceremony downtown, and BWN's Sean Quell Dennis went to shine a light on the event. Every year, on the eve of Thanksgiving, the community comes together to light up the town for the holiday season. We asked Susie Helm, the Director of Events and Tourism, about what it takes to make this event happen annually. I get to help organize all these events for the city that are run by the city and promote them and cheerlead them, um, but really there's a lot of people behind the scenes that make sure this happens. It takes dozens and dozens of people working hard to make these things happen. Members of the community tell us what they enjoy most about this ceremony. Seeing a bunch of people together. Watching my son play. My son plays in the band. He will be leading a certain someone up the street today. That's my favorite part. I love that the community loves it. I love they like to come together and that they have a moment to um, celebrate a tradition they've been doing for many years and to be thankful and to be together for Thanksgiving. Mayor Bernard took some time to share his excitement with us. We are here tonight to light the North Adams holiday tree and kick off the holiday season. For years I would be I would be here for it. My daughter was in the, the high school band, so I would always be there with the band or just you know before she was in high school we would come because it's a great community event. But to be able to be up there and, and kind of convene the, the tree lighting and bring everyone together and then go over and do the countdown and, and you know, have some great, you know, some great kids from the community there to, to flip the switch and actually light up the tree, that's great. It's so exciting. Children tell us what they're most excited about for the holiday season. Community, music. Santa. <laughs> the connection, the, like the community spirit that people um, really love being together despite the really cold weather. Um, it's just a heartwarming experience. The kids love it. They love seeing Santa. It's a lot of fun. I, it's my favorite thing about small communities is the sense of community spirit and the ability for us all to easily come together like this. For Beacon Web News, I'm Shonquel Dennis. For World AIDS Day, the Susan B. Anthony Women's Center will be tabling in the Campus Center Marketplace on December 3rd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Students will have the chance to learn more about AIDS and HIV prevention. Tickets are now on sale for the fine and performing arts showing of Macbeth. Witness an imaginative retelling of Shakespeare's classic play that shows the physical and psychological effects of power Macbeth faces as he attempts to take the throne. Tickets are, are available on mcla.ticketleap.com. Opening night is November 30th at 8 p.m. RPS is hosting their annual New York City bus trip this Saturday, December 1st, and it's open to all students. Seating is on a first-come, first-serve basis. Tickets are $16 and must be paid with either cash or check at sign-up. The bus will be leaving from Mohawk Street at 8 a.m. and will be departing the city at 7 p.m. Stop by the RPS office at Townhouse 89 for further information. Tuesday, November 20th, was the 19th National Transgender Day of Remembrance, and Victoria Weichel caught up with MCLA's IGE for the vigil. 20th was the 19th Annual Transgender Day of Remembrance. It is observed to memorialize and honor the victims who lost their lives to anti-transgender violence. The day was founded by Gwendolyn Ann Smith in 1999 to honor Rita Hester, a transgender woman murdered in the year prior in Alston, Mass. A North Adams resident, Crystal Lee Steele Nutzline, was murdered, becoming the first transgender person to be killed in 2018. Crystal is the founder of Miss Trans American Pageant and Miss Trans New England Pageants. CLA IGE hosts a visual every year to remember and honor the lives lost this year to anti-transgender violence. Talked with MCLA's Transgender Affinity Group, 
co-presidents, and QSU president about the Day of Remembrance and on-campus resources. Really heartbreaking to think how much hate crimes have gone up in the past year. So with this, I want to give a name and give a legacy to those that have died, and so does IGE, so does the rest of QSU. I really think that an event like this is important and absolutely imperative in today's world. Transgender Day of Remembrance is basically a day to remember um, all of the trans people around the world who have been uh, murdered in this year. As for resources for students on campus, there is uh, IGE, which is the Identity and Gender Equality Resource Center, up on the third floor. It's usually open most of the business day, so you can just walk in any time and talk to someone. There's a lot of information about um, gender and sexuality, but not as much as IGE, as IGE is, that's what IGE specializes in. However, the Women's Center is also open on most business days during the business hours, um, sometimes a little less, but usually it's pretty consistent. With Beacon Web News, I'm Victoria Weigel. Join MCLA's IGE Center Thursday, November 29th at 7 p.m. for their Let's Talk About It in Murdoch 218, open to anyone who wants to discuss how to become a good ally. Let's Talk About It is one of the events taking place for the IGE's Alley Week, so don't miss out. For more information, you can t contact and follow IGE on Facebook and Instagram at MCLA IGE. You want a pizza me? The Class Council of 2019 is hosting an event exclusively for seniors on Friday, December 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. Come on down to Venable Gym to mingle with your class, enjoy music, and eat some pizza from various locations from around town. Students will also be voting to decide on the best pizza in North Adams. Entry fee is $5 and all funds raised will be reserved for senior days this upcoming May. And on this week's edition of Take Note with Andrew Belarjan expresses his views on student responsibilities for maintaining shared spaces. MCLA offers a wealth of services and resources for the campus community. However, maintaining and preserving the resources on campus such as academic buildings, residences, and furnishings by the responsibility of all members of the college. When it comes to the residence areas on campus, people often take it for granted that Residential Programs and Services, or RPS, is responsible for everything. While RPS manages the residence areas, they are certainly not responsible for the instances of vandalism and improper use of bathroom facilities across campus. It is the student body who should take the responsibility of those unacceptable behaviors. And speaking of those unacceptable student behaviors, it truly is hard to not mention the issue in our library a couple short years ago, where someone carved swastikas in library furniture. This is not only inconvenient and expensive, but also deeply troubling that someone in the 21st century would have the desire to spread such hate-filled artwork in such a publicized, welcome, and safe space. Now, this is a campus with over 2,000 people. To lean on RPS maintenance staff to clean up after making a mess in the bathroom is blatantly lacking respect and responsibility. There are certain things the students can contribute to make the campus life convenient and more comfortable. The students, for one thing, need to avoid generally just being a problem for RPS to deal with in that regard. And for another, they need to manage the small things, you know, like picking up after themselves. Additionally, because RPS has anti-drinking rules in place for most of its residential areas, getting hammered is not an excuse to break windows and generally make a mess. Don't break or defile things for any reason. As a general rule of thumb, if you wouldn't do what you're doing at your home, don't do it on campus. Thank you, and make sure to tune in to next week's edition of Take Note on Beacon Web News. The new Birdsong Gallery has opened up on Eagle Street. It is intended to include all forms of creators like painters, crafters, and musicians. The gallery belongs to Christian Brindle and Juliet Jones, who have gone through quite the journey to accomplish opening this new location within the last year. 
Hurricane Irma destroyed their home in the Florida Keys. And when looking for a new home, they found North Adams and instantly fell in love with the city. They hope the new gallery is a welcoming and comfortable place and helps with the revitalization of Eagle Street. Are you interested in joining the Beacon or Beacon Web News for next semester? Stop by the Beacon office on the first floor of Mark Hopkins. Applications are due on Thursday, November 29th at 5 p.m. For more information, contact Professor Sean McIntosh on Office 365. On November 5th, Berkshire County Regional Transit Authority uh, paratransit drivers rejected a new contract. According to the Berkshire Eagle, the contract dispute is between BRTA paratransit drivers and a first subsidiary. Paratransit management of the Berkshires, which has operated the BRTA's on-call bus service since July 2016. This dispute then led to the authorization of a strike for all BRTA services that would have occurred on November 16th. However, this was delayed after the announcement of a meeting to have taken place on November 26th. As it stands, the issue is still not been resolved. Now, let's check in with Erica Lucia for a recap of high school and MASCAC sports. Hello and welcome to This Week in Sports. I am Erica Lucia. High school sports fans, are you ready for everyone's favorite season? Well, lucky for you, basketball is back. Northern Berkshire County teams, Hoosick Valley and Jury, are ready for the opening of their 2018-2019 season. Hoosick Valley boys basketball ended their 2017-2018 season with an overall record of 9-10 and 5-6 and and in the conference. Powerhouse Isaiah Stubbs averaged 16 points per game. Stubbs had a 32-point game against Wakona Regional High School in February, which helped Hoosick Valley win a 59-52 victory. With their 2018-2019 season arriving soon, Hoosick Valley boys coach Dave Hart will keep about six returnees and open their season away at 7 p.m. Thursday, December 6th at Pioneer Valley Regional in Northfield, Mass. Jury Blue Devils boys basketball opens their 2018-2019 season with an away game at 8 p.m. Saturday, December 8th at Hopkins Academy. Jury's key players are senior Reese Reset and junior Scott McGuire. Reset averaged about 19 points per game in his 2017-2018 season and also became a part of the 1,000-point club during his junior season. McGuire averaged about 19 points per game and scored a career high of 29 in an early March win of 96-62 against Duggan. Jerry Boyce finished their 2017-2018 season with an overall record of 18-5 and 13-2 in the conference. Hoosick Valley girls basketball, under the coaching of Ron Wojcik, finished their 2017-2018 season with the overall record of 19-3 and 7-1 in the conference. Senior Lexi Mercer, who began her time as a freshman averaging about 6 points per game, now averages 16 points per game. Mercer also had an outstanding performance against Taconic High School in February with her career-high game of 26 points, leading Hoosick to a 72-38 win. The Lady Canes will open up their 2018-2019 season at 7 p.m. December 14th at Minnichaug Regional. Ian Downey, the Lady Blue Devils coach, led his team to a 10-11 overall record and an 8-0 record in the conference. Brooke De Janeiro, a veteran, averaged 14 points per game last season, including a career high of 33 against Lennox in January. Senior Haley Shook averaged about 10 points per game, helping lead Jerry to a successful season. The Jury Blue Devils will begin their season against Monument Mountain home at 7 p.m. Tuesday on December 11th. Our very own Trailblazer men's and women's basketball teams started their 2018-2019 season in early October. Last year, the women ended with an overall record of 6-18, going 5-7 at home and 1-10 on the road. Four games into this season, they sit at 3-1. Seniors Courtney Pingelski, Larray Brundage, Sam, Samantha Gowran and Mackenzie Robinson all averaged about 10 points per game. Pignowski, a high 23 points against SUNY Koboskill on November 13th, helping with a 65 to 46 win. She also caught nine rebounds and outscored SUNY Koboskill herself in the third quarter. The men ended their 2017-2018 season with an overall record of 10 and 16, six and six in home games, and three and eight on the road. Four games into this season, the men hold a 1-3 record overall. With eight returners and seven new team members, sophomores Hayden Bird and Mike DiMartinez have been outstanding. 
Dee Martinez had a successful weekend November 16th and 17th at the Kenwright Invitational in Amherst, Mass. He had 24 points against Keene and 21 helping the Trailblazers with a 90-81 win over Framingham State. Dee Martinez finished a great weekend on a 5-11 shooting. He went 11 for 13 from the free throw line and 23 for 25 between the games combined. For BWN Sports, I'm Eric Kalusha. IGE is hosting a movie night on Thursday, December 7th at 7 p.m. in Sullivan Lounge. The movie is Holding the Man, telling the story of Tim and John who fall in love while teenagers at their all-boys high school. Pizza and drink will also be provided. Yesterday, it was announced that Dr. Monica Jocelyn, Dean of Academic Affairs, will be retiring after 25 years of service to the MCLA community on February 1st, 2019. Jocelyn began her career as a part-time faculty member, and over time, she worked her way up to become the Dean of Academic Affairs. Throughout her time at MCLA, Jocelyn has made many STEM initiatives, which include leading the work on designing the Feinbaum Center for Science and Innovation. Each year, for those who have lost children, have the opportunity to remember and reflect on their loved ones at the Angel of Hope. Located in Southview Cemetery on Thursday, December 6th at 7 p.m., Reverend Darius Wudarski of St. Elizabeth of Hungary Church will give prayers. Donna Morgan will read the names of those memorialized, and all are welcome. And for this week's student feature series, Ali Thienel checks up on Corey Powers. This week, I got the chance to sit down with a certain individual for BWN's newest edition of Student Feature. He's an athlete. He's heavily involved in both Poli Sci Club and Debate Club. Here is Corey Powers. At MCLA, you can find Corey Powers, a senior political science major from Connecticut, all over campus. After arriving at the school, he dove right in to all it had to offer. Having run cross country for two years at MCLA, Powers reflects on how some of his favorite memories stem from the sport and his involvement in the Poli Sci and Debate Clubs. I've always been interested in politics and so I really like Poli Sci Club because we just get to sit in a mostly informal setting and just discuss politics, discuss uh, local politics, what's going on in Massachusetts and North Adams, as well as what's going on nationally. Cross Country is a smaller team. There's this Last year there were, I think, eight or nine of us. This year there were only five of us. You get really close with everyone. Um, you're pr running with them every day. Uh, running's tough for some people, even for us when we enjoy it, it's still tough. And so you, you bond over that as well. You bond over, we have pasta parties, uh, we bond over sitting vans for hours. As a political science major, Powers had an incredible opportunity to rise at the ta Coates Lecture, where he was able to introduce President Burge in front of a massive crowd. There's around 700 people in the room, um, plus another few, few hundred people watching on other part, uh, simulcast in other parts of campus. So it's a bit nerve wracking for that, but also pretty cool to uh, be able to have that opportunity. When he's not in class, studying, or involved with extracurriculars, you'll find him at home, submerged in an intense round of game night with fellow housemates and friends. Fellow runners and friends, Christopher Gamble and Stephen Davila, reflected on their favorite thing about their housemate. His hair. He was buzzed a semester ago, and uh, I saw him for the first time since his, uh, his trip to Argentina, and he's got this bushy, you know, blonde curls, big shock. My favorite thing about Corey is that he's very accommodating. If there's ever an issue, he's never going to say no directly. We will always talk about things, and it makes me feel that he cares about what I have to say. Like all seniors, he's in the midst of planning what comes next following graduation. He hopes to spend a few years working for either Congress, a state legislature, or a federal agency. Having completed several internships, Powers enjoyed how those offices took initiative to helping people. While at school, Powers has also spent time abroad, not once, but twice, creating experiences that have great importance in his life. Spent five months in Argentina uh, with, through MCLA, and then in high school I even lived in Australia for a year. I love to learn about different cultures, and you just see that everyone's not as different. Everyone has great differences and different foods and different cultural differences that make everyone great. But at the end of the day, we're all still the same people, and there's no reason um, to dislike anyone because of that. And with that, another incredible story. For Beacon Web News, I'm Ali Tienel. You are invited to Student Activities Council's late night breakfast held in the Centennial Room on Tuesday, December 11th at 9 p.m. 
enjoy a night full of breakfast foods, music, time with friends, and a chance of winning some cool prizes. This event is free of charge, so make sure to get there as early as possible because the line is typically long. That's it for this week. To stay up to date on Beacon Web News, make sure to follow our Facebook page. Thank you for watching and make sure to tune in next week for the season finale for an update on the MCLA campus smoking ban.